Hello and welcome to Good Show, the podcast helping you answer one of the most daunting questions in television. What am I watching next? I'm Anthony Mako. And I'm Brandon Sharp. Now, I'm wondering if most of you haven't even heard of the TV show we're talking about on this week's episode. I'll start with the title. It's Dairy Girls. But before I get into the show, I want to talk a little bit about the British TV landscape. We actually do have several listeners outside of the United States, so for all I know, you may have a much better idea about what I'm about to talk about than I do. But if you've grown up in the American TV environment, like Brandon and I have, you may have no concept of just how weird our system actually is, and its endless list of options. I'm headed this direction because the channel that Dairy Girls originally aired on in January of 2018 is called Channel 4. Can anyone guess why? Well, two things were born in the first week of November 1982. Yours truly. And British, Britain's fourth TV channel. At the time, they had BBC One, BBC Two, and ITV. Then they added Channel 4, which is a free-to-air public broadcast network. From what I understand, it's sort of like an indie channel of sorts. Now, I don't want to oversimplify. The United States probably didn't have all that many channels in 1982, and Great Britain has a ton more now. The real point is, as I said, in 2018, Channel 4 gave the world Dairy Girls, and then in 2022, Netflix gave it to me. In many, in many ways, Dairy Girls was tailor-made for me, a coming-of-age story and dark comedy with a bunch of Irish accents set in the 90s. But as has appeared to have been the trend in many recent coming-of-age stories, sometimes the best ones of those are set in oppressive contexts. So, in short, this is the story of four Irish and one English teenagers growing up during some of the most unstable times of the Irish civil unrest. Hopefully that's a respectful way of referring to it. But don't worry, it's also really funny. So, Slancha Brandon, let's talk about Dairy Girls. Let's go. Did you know that's how slancha is spelled? Just so you know. Do you, you know what slancha means? It's I like figured cheers. it meant like cheers. Yeah. Yeah, it's cheers. But that it, isn't it spelled weird. I did know that's what that word was. I knew how it was pronounced. But yeah, it is spelled weird. I need to okay, see it in there. I'm, I'm sorry. Before we get into the episode, let's talk a little bit about like high on video because we're going to test this out to try and go full video. We're not sure what's going to happen, but <laughs> we were so, I feel like we were sort of surprised by the response to our video. We had a lot of people watch the video compared yeah. to the audio. Um, and so we're going to try going video on the podcast for that option. And I did want to sort of say like, feel free to write us and let us know which way you prefer. Cause you know, we're, we're making a lot of changes try, moving forward. So we would like to know how you're feeling about everything and whether you like a certain thing better or not. I did have to do my hair, which was bothersome i didn't i, I hadn't done it all day I think and we now both had hats on last time so I, well i've had hats on the last couple of times i'm like you can't wear a hat every single time but then i was like oh you gotta put headphones on so it's just a whole new world brandon that's yeah. what we're dealing with here you look but good anyway, you look good yeah you look real good too yeah oh, thank couple, you so couple I'm wearing a new shirt yeah a couple flannel shirts here and we got some hairdos and we're all good so <laughs> Okay, so let's get into the episode here. Dairy Girls, um, I'd like to first say before we get into like where you heard about it, because I think I'm the one that told you about it. Um, I sort of um, found it because at the end of last year, we were wrapping up the year, and I was like, you know what? We have a podcast about TV shows. You might want to check and see whatever. Last year, for whatever reason, even more than ever before, people were releasing lists of everything, you know, uh, top 10 uh, socks to wear on your feet. or you know, mm -hmm. It was just like it's top true. 10 yeah, everything. Yep. And so TV shows was obviously one of them. And so I was like, well, you know, now that we have this podcast, we better, we better make sure we're on it with mm -hmm. whatever the top 10 everybody thinks. And Dairy Girls was on several of these lists, not, not maybe every single one of them, but it was on several lists. And so I thought, oh, check that out. Once I found out, oh man, it's about Irish teenagers. Like, how can I go wrong? And if you don't know this about me, I love Irish culture. So, uh, just love Irish music. I love going to Irish festivals. And so, uh, you give me some Irish accents and I'm pretty much in, but I also am pretty fascinated with, I've read a couple books about sort of the Irish. I don't know what you call it though, um, because, um, the civil war sort of thing, but I've read a lot about that and I'm, I'm sort of interested in it. And I like sort of, they have, they have there's a genre of Irish rebel music that is, uh, mm. so, sort of anti-state or anti 
national army music. And so I, I, I'm just sort of into all that stuff. So you, you give me a coming of age story, which we already know I like, and you give it to me with Irish accents about Irish people. Like I'm, I'm going to be way, way in. So yeah. what was your sort of first step into this show? So I remember hearing about this show when it first hit Netflix and I remember kind of oh, parking cool. it in the back of my head, like, oh, that looks like something I might like to check out. And cause I, it did look funny to me. And I think, um, it just, there was never a reason for me to start it. Like, I don't know mm-hmm. why I was always watching something else. I don't know. And you, your prompting is really what gave me, you know, the kick in the right direction here. Mm. And, um, yeah, I'm really glad I watched it. I'm really glad I stuck with it. Um, mm. I, in fact, in prep, I mentioned this to you earlier, a few minutes ago in preparation for this, this is a lot like the rehearsal for me. It's got like those dark comedy vibes. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't just going to be repeating myself the whole time during this episode because I had a very similar experience. I was maybe going to cheat a little bit and not watch a ton (laughs) and I would have missed so much and I'll full disclosure. I made it through two seasons, so I have, I haven't watched season three, but I felt like the difference between the That's no problem. The difference between season one and season two, like that was all the difference for me. Like that. Uh, also, also, that's not a problem. Like I'm not going to about to shame you about that, but you got to watch season three because I figured not, season yeah. three was even better because that's the season that put it, made it like, that's the season that put it on all these lists that were exactly right. It, yeah. It wasn't on the list before and season three is on the list, but season three yeah. has, has some moments that are just really, really good. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely worth going on season three and, and what you saw the growth happening, like it continues on into season three. So it's very mm-hmm. good. So, um, we, we've got several things that we often say about shows in this show yeah. and this show has connections to other shows. Uh, we've got sort of, it's, it's in our wheelhouse of things we often talk about. We have irreverent comedy. We have a dark, sort of a dark comedy and we have a coming of age story. Um, is there anything that makes this show stand out for you? <laughs> I think it was just very different than anything I'd ever watched, like kind of immersive, um, like an immersion in this culture, uh, the Irish culture, Mm -hmm. even like the teen girl aspect of it is just very foreign to me. And um, I think that was maybe why I was bumping on it. Eventually Mm -hmm. you you get a couple of those things dialed up to 10. It's like culture shock. Yeah. Like seriously whiplash when you first start watching the show and I don't know, like I didn't know if I'd have a lot to say about it. Cause I was, I just hadn't watched enough and I, I will. Yeah. I think maybe just those, those couple of things were, were holding me back a little bit. So yeah, for sure. And it's uh, because I think it's based in Britain. Yeah. That's it. You know, it's, that's where it was first shown there really is that culture shock. And it's similar to certain things I felt about like, well, it's something you might feel uh, about Sherlock or just the format of Sherlock, the length of it, or uh, like it has some like flea bag vibes. Oh, sure. 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 Some sure. flea yeah. bag stuff. And yeah. there's also even like some uh, reservation dogs things uh-huh. going oh, on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a melding of a few of those yeah, absolutely. Those things that we've talked about. And I, I do think what's unique about it is, is sort of an all mostly female uh, led cast. Uh, and so it just deals with a whole bunch of different issues than we're used to dealing with in a coming of age story. Yeah. So it's definitely worth it. How about in our normal classification system? Uh, what quality level is this for? Yeah, you? it has a network feel. I mean, it's, yeah. it's yep. lower. I, yep. I, I it yep. doesn't look terrible, but it just has a very uh, stripped down network feel to me, which yeah, I think it works sure. perfect actually perfect for the content uh-huh kind of like that that school age plus the whole like crazy rebel ira stuff going. like it just has yeah. a good has a perfect feel for what like the subject for matter what, yeah so and they're sort of a lower than middle class i think probably is how you class like uh yeah lower middle class family and so like it's okay that things feel a little more grainy because they're sort of live in a grainy world type yeah. thing. And it's also nineties based in the nineties. So that helps. Uh, I do think it's uh, there's a whole lot of it's filmed in Ireland or most of it was filmed in Ireland. Okay. And so uh, it it's there, there's something about that, the authenticity of the space it's in. So that's really nice. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I, I mostly agree with you. Um, how about characters? This, uh, I mean, characters are huge in this show. Yeah. I, I think, um, any characters you want to point out or talk about? 
So there's there's one obvious, you know, there's uh, there is a hero character in this show. It just carries a lot of it. Yeah, I I don't really connect with some of the main characters, really. Sure. sure. Uh, I was starting to really care about their story. I will say season finale of the first season, I feel like is when I was like, okay, there's some stuff to chew on here. Yeah. You know, but um the first season, you know, it's all about the humor. So I'm saying Granda Joe yeah, and the, yeah. Sister Michael Sister Michael. Yeah. I mean, she's oh, yeah. hilarious too. Yep. Their humor was hitting me just right. And I was like, I gotta keep watching this just because those two those two crazies are are really funny. Yes. Um the girls were a little overwhelming for me at first. So uh-huh. for sure. But um as I've I think I've made this comment to you many times, like as 16 year old girls will absolutely. probably be. I but so like, take that, what you would, what you would picture 16 year old girls and then add 100 mile an hour Irish accents. Yep. And have you ever noticed how all of their sentences have the same tune to yep. it? <laughs> so it's just very jarring at first. Yeah. I think you settle into it, but to me, the early like the the early people that were keeping me hooked were was the uh, the sister at their school, the main the head the head sister there, and then their yep. their grandpa. Are they're both hilarious? They're both oh, hilarious. Yeah. I mean, basically everything the grandpa says is gold. perfect, one hundred percent gold. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, yeah. And I I agree with you about Sister Michael. Probably probably we're not mostly going to be able to say these people's actual names because <laughs> there a lot of them are spelled really weird. So uh, just and they're all like most of them are Irish. So so it's hard to pronounce. But um, well, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little whack out of here. Go ahead. Yeah. Ian McElhenney plays the the grandpa, and then mm-hmm. Shabon McSweeney. Shabon, nice. I would not have guessed Shabon, but you're probably Shabon McSweeney right about. plays Sister Michael. Yes. So. So as we're talking about it, there there's this. Um, so Tommy Tiernan uh, plays da, da or <laughs> <laughs> I do think that's so funny yep. that they they never they don't say dad. They they're say listed da. as that, like in the right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, their build is is granda and da. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so the the interplay basically one of the funniest reoccurring jokes is that. Mm. Granda hates the the person that his daughter married, which is uh, the dad of one of the kids. So, but, but the dad is such a nice guy. He's just such a good guy. So there's really no reason why grand granda should be so grumpy with him, but he is, and he just can't stand him. Yeah. Um, so the whole family is great. Um, but then, uh, you know, the girls, besides the fact that I'm not going to say they're not intense, they certainly are intense. And mm-hmm. as you're watching, it's like, oh man, I need a break from this. But each of the girls does their thing, man. They're just like each. Of, and, and even though Aaron, the main kind of main girl is, she is so over the top constantly, just like played by Sorsha Monica Jackson. Yep. Nice. I think that is that, is it Sorsha or Sorsha? Yeah. No, it's Sorsha. Okay. Look at you. All right. That's fine. I, I know. I, that's about, that's it. That's all okay. I got. Uh, so she is, she like, I went back and forth between like, Oh, she's so annoying, but like, she's like purposefully annoying. Like it, like she's, she overblows everything, but as a 16 year old girl would do. So that's fine. And, um, but, uh, Jamie Lee O'Donnell yeah. plays, uh, Michelle. She's funny. She's very funny. She's got a lot of funny lines. She's well, the most irreverent. She's like the flea bag of the group basically. So there's, there's a, uh, a grandpa and dad relationship between her and then her cousin. I think it's a similar thing where she just yeah. rags. The only boy in the group is, uh, is James, her yeah. cousin. And he goes to this all girls school, <laughs> yeah, which is the whole premise of this is just wild, but she but, but rags also he's, on him. So, and also he's English. He's English yeah. Yes. And so she's ragging on him all the time. And it's really funny. Like that's maybe between after the sister and, and granda, that her and that like that whole thing, the back and forth there is, is just as funny. They also so. literally like in one of the first couple episodes, they established this joke that basically they all just assume he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, like, so th- they just kind of yeah. keep talking about it as if he's gay, but he's like, I'm not gay. <laughs> but it, th- the best part is it's not just them. Every new person we no, are yeah, introduced yeah. to is like <laughs> easy, sweetheart. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it's real funny. Yeah, it is definitely funny. It's a, so, it's yeah, a very t- funny show. 
just v- tons of good characters. I mean, yeah. just like t- tons of good characters. Uh, and so, it, it, yeah, that's just well done and we could point anything else. Okay, story-wise, this is not, there's not an overarching, there's a little bit of an o- overarching story, but it, it's, it's almost like procedural in the sense that it's a high school, like different high school issues and I, I'm probably using the word procedural slightly incorrectly, but it's, yeah, it, I would say sitcom. Is sitcom closer, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, closer to what we're talking about here. I think it's light on the story in the beginning. I mean, we get a premise, we get like a general idea. Mm-hmm. I feel like seriously, season finale of season one into season two just skyrockets the story. Like we mm-hmm. get some serious story. There's like, um, I don't know if premise is the right word, but the uh the setting i guess with this this war torn irish mm-hmm. yeah. like some of that stuff is very interesting to me like yeah. so i was sitting there thinking i'm watching the first ep- the first season and i'm thinking well oh, gosh i would almost like a documentary on this time period mm-hmm. or you know like another thought was like i would almost like to just follow grant granddad or, around a lot you know uh-huh but anyway I stuck with it. Like in the story, you like, I say all that about the girls that they, they're a little overbearing in the beginning to say something just happened in a season two. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I care so much about this group now. Uh huh. You know? So like, you got to wait, you got to wait for it, but you know, it's coming, it's coming. And I think, I think it really, really, really works. Well, story, those light in the beginning, I think we're, we're getting like, Slammed in the face with culture. We're getting slammed in the face with jokes, which are funny. Uh, we're kind of meeting all the characters. Lots heavy, of th- heavy accents. So heavy, like, heavy accents. So you're you're kind of wading through that a little bit. Yeah, it's hard to, yeah. Tons of energy. I'll say that. The episodes move super quickly. There's tons Quick of energy. Dialogue, yeah. But I couldn't then turn around and say the story moves quickly because I don't feel like there's a ton of story happening. No, most of the premises of each episode are, are like super ridiculous. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, but then it, it's, you take this ridiculous premise and then the, the group sort of always kind of fumbling around and finds a way to mess things up in some way, every single episode. Um, and so, but it's usually in some, from, from some ridiculous premise and in some ridiculous way. And then that's set against very fast dialogue uh-huh. and crazy interactions. You got, four teenagers yammering at each other really, really fast in Irish accents. So, and lots of jokes going on, lots of wigging out and trying to solve problems. Like that happens almost every episode where there's some, they're, they're freaked out about what they've done. So they have to hurry and solve a problem. So it's just, it's very high energy sort of thing. Mm -hmm, And so, yeah, yeah, I agree with everything you're saying so far. Uh, And anything else you want to say about, writing or i mean the humor is immaculate uh-huh. i i i usually feel that way about the brits they they nail yeah. humor yeah i don't always go for stuff that's super british or super uk you know um in that in that setting but yeah the humor is always on point and that's something that really carries you through the show probably worth noting it is it like we've said it's that irreverent style comedy and so and uh, tons, tons of, of tons, tons of, of language. language yeah yeah tons of uh irreverent topics uh-huh. um yeah so that's that's worth noting at least but yeah Okay, so I'd like to get into, uh, you were sort of dragging your feet, as you've mentioned, but you told me, you told me today it, it got you. Yeah. And so, uh, what had been holding, can you talk a little more about what had been holding you back and then what, what was your transition point and where are you now moving forward? Excited to go, you know, can I, can I flip that around a little bit? Did anything, Yeah. did anything click in your, did you know exactly what I was talking about when I said that? Uh, I thought I did, but I thought you were in season three. So I no. Okay. Sorry. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's good news for me coming up. I mean, some more story. I think there's, so this is a historical event, but in season yeah. three, there's a, when, when Bill Clinton comes to sign, that's the end of two. Oh, that's the end of two. I've seen that. Okay. That, that episode is, I think phenomenal. Oh yeah. 
Yes. When they're playing that out. So uh-huh. I, I, okay. So I, I was, I was in, that's the moment that. I thought you were talking about. Sorry. I was in before that I was in at the end of season one. And honestly, it's, it was a bunch of little things. There was a couple things kind of juxtaposed over each other, a couple of scenes taking place at the same time. And you see like some tenderness from characters that haven't been tender at all. And yes. I don't know. It was a combination of that plus like the music. I'm a sucker for the cranberries. So we get a little uh-huh. bit of that in there. Yeah. So there was a couple things happening. I was like, ah, daggone it. They got me. Uh, and then season two started and it was like, boom, boom, boom. Good, like great, great, great. I, I, I don't know that they're all the episodes are good in season two, I think. So, yeah. and, and, the, and the story is just phenomenal. It, it really, really, it's almost like, they figured out what the show was in season two, which we've seen time and time and time again. Yes. In my mind, in my mind, it's like they worked out all the the funny stuff in season one. They're like, okay, yeah. we know we know it's funny. Now we got to like really nail the story, and I think that's something they really did in season two. So, yeah, I also wonder how much there's some X factor with falling in love with characters, and probably for every show that takes a while. Yeah, especially when maybe you're not prone to love these characters for whatever reason since so like outside of your normal uh relationship group so you're not hanging out with 16 year old girls on a regular basis so like they're you're not going to be prone to really like resonate with what they're going through any of this stuff so there's a lot of things that are working against you as you're trying to relate to this group and sort of fall in love with them so i'm wondering i'm curious how much you have to go yeah go ahead i also think that the kind of the bridge for me and comedy or dark comedies is just some nuanced emotion. I, I think um, telling a story with some heart is something I really need uh-huh. with my comedies. Yeah. And I just wasn't getting it until, until season two. I was, there's a ton um, of heart in season two. Yeah. Sure. And that's, and that, and that's why I'm in, that's why I'm yeah. in now. You know, I really felt like they, they went that extra step. So it's an easy sell for me now. It's an easy sell. Yeah. Okay. So I was like you, I was sort of underwhelmed at first by the shows that didn't have me. I specifically remember I checked it out. I did think it was funny. I don't know if I was going to say this is a great show. And then all of a sudden, probably around season two, I was like, oh, this is a great show. Um, And I'm curious, how much do you think maybe for the two of us that had to do with the main characters mostly being female? And I don't think it's a sexist thing. I just think it's a, a relating to female adolescence like we have we have no relation to female adolescence so how much do you think that affected what we were going through i think it's definitely it definitely plays a role i don't think it's all of it though i sure. really i really and i and i i don't want to sound like a broken record i really feel like they didn't care too much about connecting with the audience early on hmm. i think they just wanted to make the audience laugh and they hmm. did and it hmm. worked yeah. But I feel like I was having a hard time connecting because there was no reason for me to connect with the characters yet. Yeah. So I don't know. It's, it was literally, it's just the way they're telling the story. And I think it's good. But like I was saying, I was more interested in like other possible things that I could be like, oh, let me Google some stuff on this um, oh, IRA, yeah. this time in the 90s time in Ireland. You know, let me, let's, I want to find out more about that. And, you know, there's other things I was interested in when, and I should have been interested in the main cast there, the, the, the friend group. And I don't know. I just wasn't, I, um, got there, got there eventually. And I feel like I probably had a similar experience. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm way out in left field on this. I feel like now that I have more of a complete picture and not even the full picture, but more of a complete picture, I feel like, yeah, that's what they were. That's what they were doing. I think they were they were running this. They were rolling this show out as a comedy, and then they decided mm-hmm. to add some more heartfelt story. And and now it's a good show to me. You know. Yeah. So. Cool. The girl thing, yeah, it's there for sure. But yeah, um, I don't think it's as big a deal as the way it's written. Yeah, yeah, I, I get you. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, and as I go back and think about it, like a lot of the zany moments are not based around gender. So no. It's- yeah, there are some, but not not a ton. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Okay, how do you feel like they did with the juxtaposition of the surrounding violence, uh, you know, in the country and the violence, quote unquote, violence of adolescence? Uh, I 
thought they got a lot of traction with the metaphor of uh, to a teenager dating is the same thing as a civil war, you know, something yeah. I, obviously that's an oversimplification, but like the battle going inside your body when uh-huh. you're going through adolescence is feels a whole lot like some sort of war or uh, uh, romantic relationships are just, you know, as the largest stakes you could possibly think of. So, but they do, like we've mentioned, they do juxtapose that against like the conflicts around and like the stakes of walking down the street, like, okay, there could be violence at any moment. And also same thing with relationships. So. Does this sound like a conversation we've had before? Like that, the war zone, the middle, middle school, high school war zone. I don't know. Is it what episode would it have been? The wonder years. Oh yeah, sure. And I was yeah. thinking about yeah. how tortured I was during a sh- during the Wonder Years to you know when we were talking yeah. about relationships. Yeah. And so personally, and yeah. I'm just saying personally, I think a show like The Wonder Years nails those tumultuous beats a little better. But I think it could well, have a lot to do with kind of the cultural divide. I think the boy versus, you know, Kevin, I relate to a character like Kevin, whereas there's probably plenty of people who would relate to, you know, a Claire or an Aaron, you know, more mm-hmm. so. So I think there's, there's a couple of things at play here. You know, I'm, I'm middle America. My show's mm-hmm. the wonder years. So I think there is, but, but this show it's, it's very similar vibes. I was thinking though, like, can you imagine watching a show like the wonder years sit with a backdrop of like, a war tour in Ireland because mm-hmm. I would be well, getting very so, similar vibes. So, so it's interesting that you mentioned that because <laughs> I mean, the wonder years does have that in it. Yeah, sure. For because sure. it's, it, it, it's the Vietnam war. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's a whole lot of that in there. Uh-huh. Um, I hadn't really thought too much about it, but there's a whole lot of that in there. When I that. read your question, I was like, you know what? Yeah. Just that angst that uh-huh. everything is the most important thing at that moment. Yeah. Like that's how I was feeling when I was really chucked into the wonder years. And I think and it was just, it's sort of like how in the wonder years, it's like, what is Kevin's response to uh, yeah. Winnie's brother dying, kissing her? Like <laughs> that's not the best time, buddy. Yeah. Chill. But, uh, but those, all those emotions are all mixed up during adolescence. And so um, I, and- I do like, um, I do like the comparison though. I, yeah. I think, Oh yeah. I think it fits perfectly, especially for that high school relationship, that yeah. high school scene, you know, the, the, the comparison is perfect. And for it, teenagers, it's like the anxiety of you, you don't understand like military violence enough to be almost like anxious enough about it. Yeah. And you're like overblowing teenage problems so much that it's almost like the anxieties of the two are even, which is very interesting, but that is sort of how it feels. And as you age, you sort of like realize the difference in those sorts of things. But it like, I almost like remember them being almost the same thing. So it's that I do think that's one of the things this show captures so well. And then it also puts some of these things happening at the same time. Like, for example, I think I can say this without spoiling. um, But because I also don't remember the very specific thing. But on that day where Bill Clinton's coming into town. Uh, to sign the Good Friday Agreement th- or Accord, they miss it because they're dealing with their adolescent issues. <laughs> they miss the actual, like, they've been waiting the whole episode to see him, and they miss it because they're dealing with their adolescent issues. Um, and they miss, sort of almost even miss this historic moment because, and eh, this is a little more important to us, honestly, in this moment. Mm-hmm. So it's it, that that's the sort of juxtaposition that happens in the show that I think is is really, really good. Well, I was thinking what it must be like to be more concerned about who, uh, either making it to a dance on time or they, mm-hmm. they, being more concerned about those things than the military checkpoints yeah. that you had to go through to go anywhere. Yep. That, to me, was like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine growing up in that. Yep. I mean, that seems insane. But they barely even notice it. They, so, ba- it, they don't notice it at all. They, yeah. It's just normal stuff. Yep. The well, there's a scene when the um, the they're the, called the Orange Men, the, the Protestants, uh-huh. right? Yep, yep, yep. And they get caught in the middle of this, I don't know, riot. Is it is that mm-hmm. too strong a word? No, yeah, yeah. I think and they're fair. like, 
kind of fine. The kid, yeah. I mean, like the adults were a little more, you know, stressed uh-huh. and the kids, hopefully that's not spoiling anything. No, I but, don't think so. But they're, they are so calculate, not, not, no, not calculated. They're, they're naive to all the things going on around them. And I think it just comes from growing up in that, which yeah. would be crazy to me. Would be, yeah. Crazy. They also, there's a couple times where they sort of say like, uh, like I, the episode where they have the, I think it's the Catholic boys come in yeah. or no, the Protestant boys come in yeah, and they, the Catholic at, to the Catholic girls school. And then they're having like sort of a, they're trying to work out their issues between Catholics and Protestants, but really they're just, all the kids are mostly concerned with like relationships. Yep. <laughs> and so, but that's exactly what would actually happen yes. if you try to do that. Like, Hey, let's get a bunch of let's try and have peace talks between teenagers. And it's like, no, we're not going to be concerned with peace talks. We're <laughs> concerned with other things at the time. That's a great um, episode, by the way. Oh yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, coming back to sort of like, you're right. Uh, the, the headmaster of the school, she's awesome. Uh, mm. so, and I really like the priest too. When he comes in, he's so goofy and like, it's almost like a commentary on religion too. He's so aloof and coming up yeah. with super, super weird things. And my, I, one of my favorite episodes is when they think Mary was actually shedding a tear. <laughs> yes, I love that. That episode. happens really early. Yeah. It's yeah. It's very early, but I do love that episode. It's really, really funny. I think uh, that's another little cultural divide thing happening. The, 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 the Catholic aspect, mm-hmm. you know, just, I'm, I'm not going to say my take on it, but their approach to their, like their religion, you know, it just, it is, it just is different than like some, like someone who grew up in a Christian school, Catholic school is quite a bit different. Yeah. So I think that was also something that I was taking in. Oh, that's interesting. As I I was watching the show. Yeah. You know, so it's interesting that you were in a Protestant school of this sort Uh to some extent. Well, yes. I mean, also Catholic schools in, um, in the United States are probably quite a bit different than Irish Catholic schools. So yes, yes. I think that's true. Okay. So this show is pretty raw, uh, potentially Uh vulgar, pretty much vulgar. Uh, but I actually feel like it was pretty appropriate, uh, because, because it kept bringing me back into this context that we've been talking about. Um, so for example, if a car bomb might explode at any time, (laughs) one might be more likely to use the F word on a regular basis. <laughs> it's just like a, a, a the amplified. Stakes. Yeah. The stakes. Uh, and so, and, and um, with the, with the potential of, I kept, I guess I kept thinking like one of the, one of the teenage girls is like way over sexed. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so I, I say just, she's the main, there's the one, there's one girl the who's main. mainly the vulgar one. She's yes. mainly introducing a lot of these more vulgar conversations. Just one girl. I will Her character, s- though, is, I, I, in my opinion, sort of perfect. She's it's really funny. She's, but she's vulgar in word and like uh, pursuit. Sometimes her pursuits not, are somewhat yeah, vulgar. Not deed. She she's, doesn't ever follow through. She's not yeah, vulgar in deed. It's more like just this is what I would be doing. Or that's is, yeah, that's this exactly is, this right. Is what I, I will be doing. Yes. A tough talking uh-huh. vulgar teenager who doesn't yep. do any like it. it so yep. it, it was such a very, it was a familiar character to me, but also, like I said, I think the vulgarity just kind of kept pulling me back into the context in a proper way where it's like, yeah, I mean, just like even the oversexed part of it, it's like, well, you know, if, if your risk is a little more violent, if your risk is death a little more often, right. you might be interested in advancing your life. You might act like you're older than you are, you know, something yeah. like that. And so yeah. I, I imagine that's probably true for them. I also think again, cultural, culturally, I think uh, language is not as big a deal as it is in the United States. Sure. Yes. This is a very, very British show. I, and I, when, and whenever I watch something that was like produced by the BBC, yeah, you kind of have to take that into account. There's just stuff that's not as big a deal over there. Yeah. So it's kind of some of that going on. I also couldn't begin to, I, I don't really know at all, but I do find it very interesting that this is a show about the conflict in Ireland produced by Britain. Mm-hmm. Like, by a st- yeah. almost like a state television channel. So it's like, yeah, I, I, it's, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems very interesting, but I, I couldn't. I think dig- there's a, it happened far enough removed where I'm sure they were being res- not respectful, but they were probably trying to include a wider scope on the sure. viewpoints there. 
Sure. Um, if it was maybe happening, and if this was a show from 92. Oh, yeah. I would say, yeah, I don't know that we want the British perspective here. Yeah. But for I sure. think we're far enough removed, it was probably pretty generous. Yeah. Okay. There's an issue in this show. I don't even know if you're aware of it. I imagine you are, but that we had a similar issue in a couple other shows we <laughs> talked about, but these actors are a lot older than the people they're playing. Like uh, Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Just like Friday Night Lights. But yeah, I mean, but I think, um, uh, the, oh no, it works here. It works. You think so? Oh, I think it does. Okay. So how so? I don't know. I don't know. But as soon as I, I mean, I just read, read that question. It, it never, it never crossed my mind that these girls were not actually high school age. The actors. Okay. So, so, uh, Jamie O'Donnell, Jamie uh-huh. Lee O'Donnell is 35 years old. Good heavens. I- <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Are you serious? Yes. Playing a 16 year old. 16 year old. Yeah. Whoa. So like, um, so, I mean, I could chalk, I didn't, I, I mostly, it didn't distract me. It was fine. Uh, and I was mostly fine with it, but, uh, I just found it so interesting that, that wow. they were so much older. Um, so yeah, the person who plays Aaron is 30. Uh, so okay. it, yeah, they're just like, but I mean, I think it's I, maybe a little, they just, maybe they just nail the high school girl aspect yeah. of it. Maybe just nail it yeah. because Maybe you're so unfamiliar with what it's like Maybe to be a high school girl. You I don't no know what idea. it should be like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because um, Tim Riggins looks 35. Yeah. But he wasn't like, at the time, really. And he I acts mean, 35. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, yes, yes. But these girls, I would, I would have never guessed 35. Yeah. Never not there. Guessed. She's, I think Jamie Lee O'Donnell's like one of the older ones, but they're all quite a bit older than 16. That's for sure. They're at least 10 years older. Uh, so, yeah, quite interesting. Uh, any final thoughts on Dairy Girls? Any other questions, Brandon? I think. <laughs> yeah, just an, another one that I would, um, I would start and work your way through it. You know, really give it some time because it'll surprise you. And I, um, I don't know. I think I should trust your opinion more often, Anthony, because uh, <laughs> you haven't steered me wrong yet. Uh, yeah. Okay. Not used to throwing compliments around in here. No, but yeah, I'm very, I'm taken aback by that. Figured, give credit where credit is due. I suppose you have come around. Well, I mean, but we do agree on TV shows generally. Mostly, but yeah. you don't come around on my stuff as much as I come around on your stuff. Well, I think you're just, <laughs> I think you're talking about recently. I think you're You've little, been hitting me hard. I have been hitting you hard recently. That's but, all right. I feel what you say. Like I, I'm like, you're, you're being very accurate, so I can't. I can't fault I t- you for that. No, no, no. Yeah, but it hasn't been as bad as you think it's been. I think you're, I know. you're overpersonal. Playing it up a little bit. I, I, I think my final thought on Dairy Girls would be, uh, it's a little more than a show you pop on in the background, but it is very much almost a show you pop on in the background. It's a lighthearted show generally, and you can kind of tune into some serious moments, but you don't have to. And so it's not. It's not a slog you're not you don't have to dig through this thing it's it's no. lighthearted. it's fun if you miss a little detail every once in a while then that's no problem you'll you'll kind of hop in and you can be around for the laughs and that's great um and so it's, it's just a nice show to have on i i when i popped it on i was sort of in the midst of really intently watching some stuff and i'd come back and forth between intently watching some stuff and i felt like this was a breath of fresh air okay. coming in where i didn't have to be like so locked into the details and following storyline and like mysteries and solving you know solving these problems this was just a little more lighthearted. so yeah definitely check out dairy girls yes okay brandon let's do our quick hits as uh just uh as we we by the way just Stepping back, having a casual conversation, we have sort of, we recorded our first episode of the season, which will release uh, to us next week, but um, we recorded that like what, two, three weeks ago or it's something? Been a bit. It's been yeah, a little, it's been a little bit. while. So now this is episode two, but yep. it's been a long time. And we've also launched some other initiatives. We've released some episodes of things that we've recorded in the in-between. Yeah. So I'm very discombobulated on where we actually are. Right. And like what I may have talked about in the episode that would technically be just the week before this, <laughs> but it was like a year and a half ago. So uh, anyway, uh, so 
If you don't uh, know this, we've decided to forego the uh, pitching something to each other basically just out of efficiency because we're running out of things to pitch to each other that we haven't seen. And if we want to pitch something to each other, we'll just do an episode on it. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to forego that for the moment. Right. Um, but this is also a really good time to maybe promo some of the other stuff that we have going on right now, which is uh, Brandon has been a little more active than I have, but we have we have an active TikTok now. Yes. And we've been uh, sort of putting stuff out there. We'll put out clips there. But also Brandon's done some several really good quick hits to this point. Uh, we've moved some quick hits to to TikTok, where it's just like uh, maybe a minute, like he'll sell you on a show and I'll probably hop in here eventually and do some of that. So right. you could definitely join us on TikTok. And then if you're listening audio, we're doing, we're, we're going for some video stuff on our YouTube channel. So um, I, Brandon, you mind plug in some of those things real quick? Just yeah. So the quick hits I've done, I've done two, I got the third in the works, but those okay. are, if they're going to happen, they're going to happen on TikTok. We'll of course advertise them around a little bit. But those, if they if they're released, they'll be released on Tuesdays, and those are going to kind of be. If we have something to talk about, we'll do one. If we don't have one, it's not. We're not going to be handcuffed by this kind of thing because yeah, we want to make sure it's good, creative, quality content. We don't just want to like be cranking stuff out just to, you know, just to have stuff. Yeah. So those, along with our good show reacts episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, that is, that will be, if we have something to react on, if there is a new season of something that we've done an episode on, that's mm -hmm. going to be a good show reacts episode. Those will live on YouTube. The audio will still be available on our podcast stream, wherever you get your podcasts, but we really want to push the YouTube aspect of this because, well, for one, we're putting a little more work into it. So yeah. it'd be nice to, you know, throw some people over there. And also we're a couple of good looking guys. I mean, there's no, nothing wrong with, you know, taking a, <laughs> a peak? No, <laughs> a little peak? no idea. No idea where that was going. <laughs> but anyway, I, I think uh, I think the YouTube side of it has gotten me excited to do a little more video, you know, um, yeah. related items. And the big dog will be is if we start, you know, releasing video versions of our full podcast episodes. I mean, that is kind of up in the air. We're just going to kind of see how much work that's going to be, and you know, if it's doable, if it's if we can kind of work it in there uh, easily. We'll you know we'll pursue that but yep um, those are the two the two big things we're going to have video versions of the quick hits that we're um that we're about to do right now mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have a video version that'll be on youtube so we're going to start pulling parts of our episode at the very least we'll start pulling parts of our episode and releasing it on youtube mm -hmm. so we don't know if the full thing is going to be there but there will be portion highlights and quick hits will be or what we're watching will be on uh, YouTube for sure. So what's our YouTube? Everything is, at, uh, is the good show podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All of our accounts are the good show podcast. So, um, we, you should be able to find our link tree floating around on something. Facebook, mm -hmm. we, we post that around quite a bit. Yep. That has all of our links in there. But if you go to YouTube, if you go to TikTok, TikTok, and you search TikTok. <laughs> I'm getting a little dry too. Okay. You search uh, <laughs> the good show podcast. You'll find, you'll find what you're looking for. Nice. Okay, cool. All right. So uh, what have you been, your quick hits, what have you been watching recently? So I'm going to save that one for like mayor of Kingstown came back. Season yeah, you two. You tried it. I tried it. It's better. It's okay. It's, it's still like, whoa, like it's a lot still. Mayor of Kingstown is so intense. And so, I don't even know the word I would use it's, to describe it, but it's I just think, like, I feel I just watched dirty watching it. Okay. So I haven't felt that way yet. I think there's some things in season one that that go a no, little too far. Yeah. sir. I meant season one for yeah. sure. Yeah. So I think it's like, okay, we're, um, we're really getting pretty, uh, pretty raw here. Yeah. Season two so far has been really good. Mm. Some, and I just watched episode two mm. and I think it's, I think the rest of the season is going to be great just based on what happened in episode two. Yeah. Um, I've been watching, yeah, we both have been watching hunters on Amazon prime. We both uh -huh. kind of came across that at the same time. It's really great. I'm, you know, I may release a, a quick hit or something on that. So be looking for that. And then finally the one I'm the most excited about, and we got to throw an episode up on this after it oh, yeah, finishes, you about finishes this. airing the last of us aired on HBO. It's amazing. It's 
Okay, can you sell me real quick? Yeah, so it's gonna it it's gonna be similar to like an in like a not zombie, more like a uh, twenty eight <sighs> days later. Oh my gosh! I know, right? What are you doing to me? I know, but there's so much good <laughs> stuff happening in there. I don't. I personally am not a, like I don't love that stuff. Oh, and you're not okay. Well, that that's I, helpful. I, I personally am not. I don't love horror movies. Um, I it's not spook. No, it's not spooky. It's terrifying <laughs> but oh, man, i don't love that but it's got such good characters and the story okay. is excellent that there are there are things here that you yeah there are things here that you're going to be like good heavens i don't know that i can keep watching this but it's very very good it's very very good okay so yeah similar yeah, more I mean, like more it. like a i am legend 28 days i'm not gonna insult it by calling it a, an i am legend but more like a 28 days later um, but like less like the, it's not zombie stuff. That's, that's, oh, okay. di- that's different. This is, um, they're called infecteds. And anyway, it's, uh, Oh, it's like a contagion or a kind of like contagion. There was something else I was trying to think of, but hmm. they're not, it's not like the walking dead. It's not like that. Okay. All right. But, I'm coming but back it, around a little bit. It's got yeah. some similar, like, and yeah, well, you just, you gotta, you gotta check it out. It's great. There's been two episodes. Um, it, it's getting crazy reviews. It's getting, yeah, so, I've seen, yeah, it's been, it's people everywhere been talking about it for sure. Um, pa- I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, um, Pedro Pascal. Is that his name? Um, I don't know the main guy. Yes. Yes. Pedro Pascal. That's right. Is one of my favorite current actors. I mm-hmm. mean, he, he, yeah, he, is he does the Mandalorian. He was in game of Thrones He's done a lot of good stuff recently. He plays the main, he plays Joel. He plays the main guy. He's excellent. Yeah. So cool. Gotta watch it. All right. Yeah. I did check out hunters. Um, and I've been, we got an episode coming up on Andor, which I'm excited about, uh, a little preview. I'll be our first Disney plus venture. And I, I enjoyed that. Um, and I just watched a ton of Jack Ryan basically today. I watched half the season today. (laughs) So, uh, and, uh, then I did check Poor out Jack. something new. So I, it was almost because of pressure from Brandon. I needed to get something. I needed to get a leg up on Brandon somehow. So I've been uh, stressing Anthony out guys. You haven't Look. been stressing me out. It's fine. But, uh, I do, I have been feeling bad that I haven't been watching enough TV lately, which is something one does not say very often. Uh, but, uh, I checked out coach prime on, uh, on Amazon prime, uh, mostly cause I've been hanging out there watching like Jack Ryan and stuff, but, um, a convert, I, I, I kept seeing, coach prime on there and you know i'm a Dion sanders fan like i he was right in my wheelhouse of growing up and yeah uh, i specifically remember making fun of a guy who had uh bought the Dion sanders rap album uh that he had put out apparently at some point and he was all about how good of a rapper Dion sanders was anyway um taint, so i take no I, way I, <laughs> I i checked out a couple episodes of coach prime and it's basically um, if you can, you should get over what you might be afraid of about watching coach prime. Cause obviously, um, Deion Sanders has always been sort of all about himself and having the confidence to sort of lead. Um, but there's some really interesting stuff going on, at least in these first couple episodes, I'll okay. probably do a quick hit on it eventually, yeah. but, um, there's, there's some really interesting stuff going on here about how like his, I'm really admiring his leadership of people like, and his, you would have thought maybe, well, like he, he was a good player. Is he going to be a good coach? Yeah, he actually seems like a really good coach and a motivational huh. figure. So, in a different, in a completely different way, he's busting every stereotype of everything you ever thought because he's messing with college football. He's messing with with historically black colleges. He's mess, you know, all these different things. He's kind of messing with, and he just has the confidence to do it. But like almost a, only a guy who played professional baseball and professional football yeah. would have the confidence to do. So it's, it's a pretty interesting show for, so far. It's basically like a, it's like all or nothing or it's like a yeah, hard okay. knocks or something like that. But it, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So I all think right, that's man. it, Brandon. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good episode. Good chatting. See ya. Bye.
That does it for this episode of Good Show. Good Show is created, recorded, edited, and produced by Anthony Mako and Brandon Sharp. Our theme music was written and recorded by me, Anthony, and all our graphics and socials are developed by Brandon. If you've enjoyed your time with us, please make sure to like or follow us on your favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. And if you appreciate our show, please throw us a rating and a review there too. If you'd like to discuss any of our content, you can search The Good Show Facebook group or follow us on Instagram at The Good Show Podcast. Thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time.